Fabulous Picture of Amir Roshi. And today I'm going to be interviewing Jeannie Moran. And she wrote this book called Someone for Sasquatch. The review is in the link description below. If you want to buy the book, that's also in the description below. And I just absolutely love this book. So I hope you enjoy it too when you read it. Hi. Hi, Ariel. I am delighted to be here. Thank you so much for your time. Well, I have a few questions. And my first one is, how old were you when you started writing this book? And when did the story come to your mind? The story actually came to my mind in a dream. Mm. Yeah, I know. When, you know how when sometimes when you're still in bed and you're kind of half awake and half asleep and you don't really know should i get up should i fall back asleep i was kind of in that moment and i realized that i was still sort of in a dream and the in my dream i was interviewing someone and it was the wife of Sasquatch, which is Bigfoot, which is not a real thing, I don't think. We think that this is a mythical creature. And so I thought, what is my imagination doing? And so I got up and I wrote down this little story about Bigfoot and his wife. So then I started to become more curious about Bigfoot about Sasquatch. And I started doing some research. Believe it or not, there are people out there who believe that Sasquatch is real. And the people who believe that Sasquatch is real believe that Sasquatch is actually female. And then I thought, well, what a lonely life for poor Sasquatch, if she is real, living in the Pacific Northwest, deep in the woods, all by herself. She must be terribly lonely. So that sort of became the basis for my story. Did you always want to be an author or did you want to be something else as a child? I actually loved writing and telling stories from the time I was your age. I used to write things down and kind of shove them under my bed, and I didn't often show them to other people. Yeah. Um, but I always loved writing stories. Um, I actually didn't become a, a writer until later in life. One of the beautiful things about life is that you can do many things during your life. You don't have to only do one thing. So I became a physical therapist. I worked with kids. I taught some classes and raised my own family and did all of those things. And I wrote stories too. So there you go. It all goes together. So what motivated you to write this book and what was your goal in writing it? My goal in writing it was to have fun. I thought it would be a really fun story. I, this is actually the fourth book I've written. And two of the other books that I wrote are historical fiction. And they required a lot of research. And they're set in a very sad time in history. And so they were very, they were kind of dark for me to write. And um, I wanted to write something that was just fun and happy and silly because I like all of those things. And well, so- this book was like the perfect one for that. Good to hear. I'm delighted that you enjoyed it. Um, so yes, I wanted to spend a little bit of time just having some fun. So what was the process of writing this book for you? Um, I'm not sure if you can see behind me, but over on this side, I have a bulletin board with all kinds of little sticky notes and index cards and things like that. Um, those are my ideas as they come to me. I jot them down on small little pieces of paper and I stick them up um, thinking that maybe sometime in the near future, I will use them in something. Um, I also have a tendency to surround myself with images of what I'm writing. Now, I was writing about fairies and Sasquatch, so it was all things that I can't take a picture of. So I did some research and I found pictures. I found pictures of people's what people mm. think Sasquatch looks like. I put this up on my bulletin board. I 
did some pictures of fairies. I got a card that has purple fairies, oh. wrinkling fairy dust. <laughs> Isn't that fabulous? <laughs> so I had myself the best time creating this entire bulletin board full of fairies oh, wow. and other mythical creatures. I put them all up around me and then I would start to um, jot down my ideas on these little index cards and stick them up all around. And that kind of starts me on my story. But writing is hard. It takes a long time to get it done and get it done right. I just kind of do the same thing with my ideas. I have a few ideas and then I have this notebook where I keep all of them down. And then for some reason, my mom She's acting as my editor for now. She finds loopholes in here and there, like like when this one that I had, where there were these four kids, and then they were to find a secret attic, and then in their attic there was a portal that led to another dimension. She was all like, well, wouldn't the parents wonder about them? And when I said the kids could make an excuse, and she said, it's not good to trick your parents. But that's like literally the same thing they do in Magic Tree. I say they're going for a walk and going to another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> that's fabulous. I love hearing about your story. I hope you continue with it. Mm -hmm. I actually love portal fantasies. Those are fun. Yeah. How long would you say it took you to write this book? about two years mm. yeah i i write i write a lot and then i go back and change it and then i write a lot more and then i go back and change it uh, i don't write beginning to end actually i tend to write by scenes i get an idea in my head of what that scene is going to look like and then i go like crazy and i write and i write and i write and i write down this whole scene and then i have to figure out where it goes where does that go in this story? <laughs> so sometimes that takes me a little while. It's not a very smooth process, but that's okay. I still enjoy yeah. it. It's like a puzzle when you have all these scenes written down and you have to put them together from beginning to end. Yes. Excellent. That sounds very fun. good analogy. You're such a good writer. I can tell. That sounds really fun. So did you have to do like a lot of research to write this book? Um, yeah, I, I did some research, like I said, about the myths about Sasquatch in particular. Um, I actually have other books, believe it or not. There are books written about Sasquatch and like real books written by scientists trying to explore whether or not this creature actually exists. And some of it is just, it's just amazing anyway. Um, so yes, I, I always say that research is like a rabbit hole. You know how a rabbit hole goes down, but then it actually goes underground and it takes you all kinds of places that you didn't you know, expect. That is true. You know? So that's how research is for me. So I went down a rabbit hole of researching Sasquatch and other mythical creatures. It was fun. It looks like it took you everywhere. And I especially love the ending where there's the, um, audio video of um the Loch Ness monster <laughs> that was really good it sounds that like the beginning good. of a series when i first wrote that scene i thought that might be what happened was that maybe i would write a sequel to that and have it be yeah, the Loch Ness like you could monster. find about all sorts of mythical creatures and then like have a series of them and then like each of them come in and perry can like find a companion for them wouldn't that be fun yeah. <laughs> I actually cool. thought it would it would be uh it, it would be something that would be very fun to explore I'll have yeah. to see whether or not I can come up with that <laughs> just I for you, you can. <laughs> so how did you come up with all those different types of fairies because if I remember in the beginning there are wonder fairies health fairies learning fairies um what do you call it? friendship fairies um yeah. love fairies what else are they? I can't even were, know. I know there were a lot. I actually started with just, you know, the picture of Cupid. The picture that we mm. always think of when we think of fairies with a bow and arrow is Cupid, right? Yeah. Very famous. And that, of course, is Carmine Valentine, except that mm. he doesn't like the name <laughs> Cupid, as you found out in the book. 
And so I started with that and I thought, well, if there's a love fairy, there must be other kinds of fairies connecting people with other good things of life. Why not? And if, if Sasquatch needs companionship, <laughs> Sasquatch might need a love interest, but Sasquatch might also need a friend. Who doesn't need a friend? So um, I thought Periwinkle Giggle Twirls was perfect as a friend. <laughs> I know, do you My love that name? got the name wrong, and when he typed it out, he put Periwinkle Glitter Tusk. I saw that. I. That's a great name, too. <laughs> That's a great name. See, that might be a story for you, a character in <laughs> a story for you. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you choose fairies instead of another creature? Like you, I I also know that you have trolls, sasquatches, Loch Ness mm -hmm. monsters, and elves. But why was fairies like the main character in there? I think because they can fly, mm -hmm. and that gives them a special a special ability in my mind. And everybody knows that fairies are invisible, and I thought it would be really fun to take this invisible flying creature and have that be Sasquatch's helper. Um, I, I always liked fairies. Why not? <laughs> What's not to like? <laughs> How did you come up with the characters Fairy Winkle and Carmine Valentine? I know it was like for Sassy Companion, but why'd you choose their certain personalities? It could be like anyone mm. in the book. Yeah, it could be any personality. Um, I always liked the idea of of some, you know how when somebody is stuck in tradition, it's always been done this way. This is how we do it because it's always been done this way. Then someone comes along with a, a different way of doing the same thing, of accomplishing the same thing. And all of a sudden, everyone goes, that's a great idea. Why don't we put that in and our- And the guy car? who keeps up the tradition, he's like, no, that's it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's, tradition is terrific, but so is innovation. And so yes. when I was going to set up a conflict between these two characters, I thought, Cupid is definitely a, a traditionalist. I mean, we all know he's been around for thousands of years. He goes back to Greek and Roman mythology. So, mm -hmm. and he's why like not the one who something... delivers all the letters for the yes. signs. Yes, exactly. So, if we take that as the tradition, why not have this innovative theory be um, someone completely different? And my, I was talking with my granddaughter about names and stuff, and she loves fairies. And she told me, she was actually about your age at the time, and she challenged me to come up with a name. This was even just as I was writing this story. Um, challenged me to come up with a name for a purple fairy. And it came to me just like that. Periwinkle Giggle Twirls. Mm -hmm. And when that name came to me, the whole character was there. This, mm, this innovative, funky girl. Periwinkle Glitter Troll just says her personality because it's like she's always she's always happy. The girl part expresses that. Purdy expresses she's thoughtful and like all sorts of stuff like that. Yes, exactly. As soon as as soon as she said Purple Fairy and I said the name, I had her entire personality. I knew who she was. Isn't that fun? Sometimes you can get the right yeah. name and the personality comes with it. Yeah. So how did you come up with the idea of Elijah and Megan with Sassy? Because there are so I many characters you. in that book and so many could be her friend and companion. But I don't understand why you chose those specific characters. Or was it because they're children and they believe in it so much? Yeah, um, because I felt like I needed some humans in there for a reader to relate to. Um, even though you can enjoy watching the fairies um, and watching Sasquatch, I think it's it's more fun to find a character who's kind of like you, just um, a regular kid like you guys are, and follow the story along with them. True. 
So what gave you the idea for Perry and Kameen's quest? I liked the idea of the challenge. Mm -hmm. The challenge really of the tradition versus the innovation. The innovation and the creative. Yeah. Yep, and how those two things can sometimes be at odds. Um, and that gave a good challenge. It created that challenge, and then those two fairies had to figure out how to do that. That makes lots of sense. How do you come up with the inside, outside, cryptid code? I mean, society of fairy code of conduct. Did you love that? <laughs> Yeah. Well, every every place has rules, right? Mm -hmm. So even the way that fairies go about their business had to have rules. And if Periwinkle was actually going to be a bit innovative, she had to kind of go outside of the rules. rules of tradition. Not real far, but far enough to to show that she was being innovative, not disobedient but mm. innovative and that being so disobedient for her and the fairies would be wearing shoes <laughs> did you love that part <laughs> yeah that was funny and then it was so cool it was really funny when mm. father time and mother nature said that she could wear shoes on her quest and then she was she like wanted to even flip -flops. Flip -flops. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> yes i know I had so much fun writing those scenes. I am delighted that you enjoyed that. It is so good. Where did you get the idea of fairy dust? And I was wondering if you got it from the movie Tinkerbell because fairy dust kind of comes from the movie Tinkerbell and... It does come from Peter Pan. I think that's probably where I yeah, first heard it Pan. when I was a kid. I heard it on Peter Pan and Tinkerbell was the fairy with fairy dust. Oh, I've heard it a million times since then. So I think maybe it's just something that we all assume that fairies would have some kind of, of fairy dust and sprinkle it around and we wouldn't even notice. Yeah, but fun. in this book, they do notice. Yes, they do. <laughs> There's a bit of a problem there. <laughs> so are you a reader and how often do you read if you are? I read a lot. <laughs> I read a lot of different genres too. I read fantasy. Um, I read historical everything because I do enjoy history. I think history I really is enjoy fascinating. History. Because yeah. history is sometimes like fiction, very enjoying for me to see how people evolved. Yeah. I don't like like the boring history, like memorizing all those dates and like hearing that you. this this became president or have like... you read the books by Alan Graff for your age? He is a um, historical fiction writer and he writes fabulous stories the i survived stories are Ooh, also I've read that all those. I've read all yeah those. yeah those They're are very terrific. enjoying for me mm -hmm. so i can yeah. see back in time but it was yeah. also literally terrifying because like that's like just like living through those moments in life yes absolutely but and very cool so, are you gonna write more books we hope so mm -hmm. um Right now, I have the beginnings of a portal fantasy, like you do, and I don't have um, I don't have all that much done on it, but it's it's swirling around in my head, and yeah. some of those little note cards over there are for that, and I will see where that takes me. Although perhaps the Loch Ness monster might resurface in my imagination and might need a story told also <laughs> i'm not you sure yet. you're gonna have to find out different scenes for that yes <laughs> and maybe some different fairies mm -hmm. maybe some maybe different there could fairies. be this scene where like there maybe they could be like this portal that was taking all the sea monsters stuck into there and then when they found out how to unleash them from the portal they all came out in a really great art like Right. That, would that would be, be cool, awesome. like a water fountain, and then they started swimming around with them. That would be awesome. Maybe you and should that write that story. The portal dimension. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, you might need to write that story, Ariel. <laughs> That's a terrific idea. You've got a great imagination. Who or what gave you the idea for the character Commander Tempest Honeypool? Because I understand <laughs> she's like the ruler of the fairies and like knows all the rules, but I love the part. It's so mischievous. She's a scribbler. 
How about it? Did that surprise yeah. you? Yeah. You want to know something it. really fun? When I wrote that, it surprised me too. <laughs> Did you ever hear that from another writer? Sometimes what you write surprises you. Yeah, when I that got happened to me. Did it? Yeah. So when I got to the part where I had to reveal who the scribbler was, I just wrote her name down and I went, oh my, I don't think I even realized in my head that that's who that was. It was her all along. <laughs> she was sneaky getting that stuff in there. <laughs> and she looked so innocent in the video where they asked. Right? What do you like to do for fun? I like to jump in the pool and read books, obviously, number one, obviously. <laughs> seeing how I read 71 books in January. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> That's a lot of books. I enjoy swimming also. Um, and I love I love being outdoors. I'm even content just reading on the porch. Up to the hammock and I just read there. Oh. I think out the outside just reinforces your brain and fills it with new information and gives yes. you ideas. Absolutely. I've done a few ideas for my, um, like, you know, ideas for a future book, hopefully. I go outside and then I think about stuff. So I think half my books are going to be about in the nature because that's just one thing that just reinforces me. I yes. might even do some mermaid yeah. things like mermaid diaries or something. Oh, that would be fabulous. Judging by my name. <laughs> well, yeah, given. And I understand there's a new version of The Little Mermaid coming out, a live version. Mm -hmm. I feel like some reason I'm the recreated soul of Ariel because I'm so good at swimming. And I and I swear, I could stay underwater for more than a minute. And that's and my brother can't even stay for a minute. Oh, my. <laughs> well, I have a question yeah. for you, Ariel. Mm -hmm. If you were a fairy, what kind of fairy would you be? Okay, this is hard, and this is also good. So, I definitely wouldn't be a love fairy. I like romantic scenes and all, but they're just creating that. It's not for me. A friendship fairy might be nice, but... The laughter fairy actually seems pretty nice. So, I'm still debating over the friendship fairy and laughter fairy. Or, or maybe, like, there could be this new type of fairy that would be friendship and laughter combined. Because friendship oh, creates lots of laughter. Yes, it does. And then, like... And, and you know how sometimes purple and orange swirl together? People always imagine that as portal. Maybe the fairies could learn a new type of magic, how to open a portal. That would be fun. That would be fantastic. Yes, it so, would. Yeah, I think I'd be a portal fairy or something. Ooh, that would be fun. Mm, true. But Nicely. if I was a wonder fairy and I could create a rainbow, I'd just do it for just see the sights. Oh, yeah like why not right rainbows and the look down a canyon or something just creates wonder for you so i think i'm debating over those three i think they're all good choices mm -hmm.